bicycle tires can go flat you know, over time if they just haven't been ridden or maybe there's temperature changes or you get a puncture, all kinds of reasons. And it's pretty easy to change the front wheel. A lot of them have quick release systems like this, but on an electric bike like this Ohm, we've got a hub motor, there's electronics. It's a little more complicated. So I've got the founder of Ohm, Michael here. Hey, how's it going? Hey, very good. And you were just gonna show us like real quick in five minutes how to change a tire on an electric bike. Yeah, I can show you a couple- And the tube. <laughs> yeah, I can show you a couple uh, quick tips on uh, how to ch change the, the rear tire on an own bike. Cool. Um, so first of all, um, make sure the system is turned off. Um, you can even uh, remove the battery pack um, before you start working on the bike. It'll make the bike a little bit easier to lift onto the bike rack. Yeah, because that's like a nine pound battery right there. Yeah. Um, so you'll need a few tools to um, to remove the the rear tire. Um, so the one thing that's different um, on this bike is you have a, a motor power cable going from the motor up to the battery. I see. Yeah, um, so the first thing we need to do is just cut off the zip ties. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I love how tucked away it is here for the bionic system. It's like not going to stick out yep. too much. Yeah, we've got some some cable guides here to align the the power cable. And then you would just remove the um, two cables so okay. that they're loose and uh, disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, next thing we want to do is make sure the bike is in the highest gear. This is really important part of um, servicing the rear wheel so mm -hmm. that you can remove the rear wheel very easily. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that will make the, the rear wheel much easier to, to take out. And so we're using a 15 millimeter wrench and, uh, we just loosen off on each side. Cool. Just like on a regular bike. And do these have torque ratings, by the way, you know, some bikes have like a, yes, um, actually. Um, um, the torque rating for these is 40 Newton meter. Okay. Um, so to be able to get the exact torque rating, you can use a, a torque wrench. Um, and um, so in foot pounds, it's around 30 foot pounds. Okay. Okay. So now I've loosened off the two bolts on the back. Um, and when I, you'll, the wheel will start to fall out on its own. Hmm. Um, so you might just need to wiggle it a little bit. Um, yeah, I see it kind of coming out of it. Is this a dropout right there? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we can, um, like we're pretty close, but maybe the bolts hitting the derailleur a little bit right there. Yeah. So there we go. There we go. Perfect. So you can just wiggle the, um, the arm of the derailleur and, um, usually push it a little bit to the right and the wheel will just fall out naturally. Okay. Okay. And, okay, so we need to take out the excess air out of the wheel. And I, sometimes you can use a screwdriver or a screw just to let all the air out. Yeah, and these are Schrader valves. There's also Presta, which are a little bit skinnier, and to get air out of those, you actually have to unscrew a little valve that's inside. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I would say most of our bikes are using uh, the Schrader valve. Just seems to be a more universal for. Well, it's like on cars and stuff, right? Yeah. It's pretty. And um, but you've also got those like little tightening nut, which is maybe a little more precision. Yeah, these are a, a new tube from from uh, Schwalbe and they have like a nice metal valve and um, it's a really durable type um, tube. Hmm. Um, so I've let out almost all of the air. I can take off this retaining bolt here and you can hear almost all the air is out. And uh, this will make it much easier to remove the tire. Cool. Um, so I'll use my tire tool and I'll kind of massage the tire and sort of look for a, a spot where I can put the tool underneath hmm. and then 
and just pull it up like this. Hmm. Um, this so, is a tire lever, right? So yeah. it's like a plastic tool you can get online or bike yeah. shop. Yeah, and I, I would suggest the uh, a plastic one. Um, if you get a metal one, then when you put the lever underneath, then you have a possibility of damaging the tube. And maybe even scr scratching up the rim a little bit. And yeah. So here, from this point, I, I start to slide the tool around hmm. and all the way around until the one side comes off. Cool. So at this point, I could remove the tube and inspect it um, and check for punctures. Um, if I find a puncture that's um, repairable, I can put a patch on it. Mm -hmm. um, or if the puncture is too big, then um, I can replace the tube with a new one. Okay, that's great. Yeah, and I've done this before where sometimes you can, if you hear the puncture, you can put a little spit on it or some water and kind of see some bubbles and identify it that way. Yeah, when I've been on the road, I mean, the um, I really want to know that it, um, that my tube is fixed mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to spend the time to, to replace the tube. So I'll generally just carry a, a couple of extra tubes with me right. um, so that if I do get a puncture, I can just replace the tube. Yeah. Um, so in this way, I don't have to take the entire tire off of the rim. I only have to take off one side of it. Okay. Um, so I would... Um, well, and on this topic, how do you know when it is time to actually replace the tire? Like, do you use a penny and see how deep the... Uh, you know the tread is or um, yeah some tires actually have a color um, layer in them so as soon as you start going into the colored layer then you know it's time to change yeah um, but generally you'll know if you're riding um, the tire will be slippery um, and you might you might start seeing the wire beads um, mm. in, in the uh, the layer of the tire okay um, but generally uh, most tires are rated at around 3,000 kilometers um, over 2,000 miles yeah um, so you can do it based on distance as well okay cool um, okay so let's now pretend that, that we've put a new yeah. tube in yeah which you just kind of line it up and tuck it under the tire yeah and then uh, we can put on this retaining screw perfect and uh, make sure it's all the way at the top and that'll kind of make sure the valve is in the right position yeah, that's great. You know, not all of them have that. Some are just rubber. Yeah. And then um, same thing, you want to just massage the uh, the bead back onto the rim. And the bead is like and the stiff rubber part there that's kind of like... Yeah, yeah, it's basically uh, um, the very edge of this the tire. It has a wire bead in it hmm. um, that basically indexes with the rim. Okay. And uh, you can kind of hear it popping in as you're re-putting the tire back on. And um, usually it's good to just start from one side and then just work your way around. Cool. And then you'll you'll get to a point that almost all of the tire is back on. But the last stretch is usually the toughest. You have to maybe use a little bit of force to get the tire back on. Yeah, I like how you set it down because that, you know, puts some, some pressure on the bottom. And oh, we don't want to lose the, the outside of the tire. These are fairly large, so they kind of... Yeah, so we can see that it's popped off on the other side, so i got to make sure that's back. And... Okay. So make sure that it's back on that side, flip it over, and... Yeah, just kind of... Do it by feel. I mean, um, and depending on what type of tire it is, it might be um, a little bit tougher to get back on. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, now that we've got the bead fully um, installed on both sides, yeah. Now we can uh, add some air to the tire. Oh, okay. So you want to air it up first before you put it back on? Um, yeah, I, I usually do just to make sure I've I've done everything right and mm. um, and. Uh, yeah, I, I think it just makes it easier. Yeah, it's a lot lighter, it. especially if you don't have a rack. We were saying before that this really helps, sort of a bike rack that you can you can work stand on, but you can also flip your bike upside down so it's resting on the handlebars and the seat and then do this from the top down. Yeah, so either or, you can put the air in before or after. Um, and um, so in this case, on the Bionics motor, you have a small notch at the back. 
hmm. um, of the app. So you have to index this with the dropout. Okay. Um, so. And that's so that the wire, or I guess it, it probably. It's, um, yeah, it could basically controls the, or it holds the motor in a certain position mm -hmm. and, um, and keeps the, um, the axle from spinning. Um, so just make sure that that is aligned. And then um, I saw you pulling kind of down and out on the derailleur again. And then yeah. So same thing when you're taking it out, um, kind of, um, adjust that hanger arm position a little bit to the outside and that will really help the tire to just or help the wheel just um, install a lot smoother yeah seat properly and the notch again um, I've installed kits and stuff before where I was having trouble lining it up but it's almost like a little torque arm it sort of fits in the axle exactly yeah gives it something to push so, against um, so with this type of system you want to make sure that it's a hundred percent into the axle so mm -hmm. You can see here. Oh yeah, look at that. It's not, it's not sitting here. It's not halfway. It's all the way up to the top, and that will make sure your disc router is aligned and yeah, um, the wheels put in straight. And these are the calipers over here. There's the disc he's talking about. You want those to be aligned properly. Um, and this is, you know, sometimes I'll see it with quick release or you know different systems. It's actually kind of nice to just have standard bolts. And then coming back to that, you know, that tightening to the proper, yeah, uh, so not over tightening it. Um, so if you're on the road, then you can just use a regular 15 mil wrench. Uh -huh. um, but eventually, you'll want to go back and use a torque wrench to put them back to their specified torque. Well, this is awesome. It's great to see a quick overview. People who don't want to get flats, you know, you can get the, the Schwabby tires that have the Kevlar lining. It's a little tougher. But I also mm -hmm. hear about tire liners and slime. These tires have um, extra puncture protection. So I've, um, from my experience, gotten very little punctures from these types of tires. Nice. Um, so there's a lot of tires on the market now that have the Kevlar linings. Yeah. Um, you can also get thicker inner tubes that have right. even more puncture protection. So That's great. Yeah, and it's a lot less messy than trying to do slime and stuff. Um, the idea behind that is there's like a, a liquid that kind of has like some like pulpy material in there and that as air is, is escaping due to a puncture, it sort of blocks that, sort of like your red blood cells um, clot on a cut, which I noticed that you had from doing oh, this yeah. hardcore work earlier. So <laughs> thank you so much. This is awesome to see. Uh, that was pretty quick, you know. I, I don't know what time we're at. We had like 10, you know, 15 minutes to do this with all of the explanations and extras. So thank you so much, uh, Michael. Uh, it's definitely great to get the extra tips, especially for an electric bike, because there are a, you know, a couple extra steps. Great. My pleasure. Cheers.